Welcome, everybody. It is time for the webinar that you have been waiting for. Today, we have the webinar called Sketchnoting with Wakelet, and we have some incredible guests ready to share with you. Um, but what I want you to do in the chat right now, I have the chat open. I see all of you saying hello to each other. We love that. We want you to um, just shout out where you're from and say hello to any familiar names that you may see in the chat. And while you are saying hello and maybe sharing what your role is in education or maybe what level of a sketch noter you might be, hey, Ryan, good to see you. Um, I'm going to introduce the two stars of this webinar. We have Rick from Wakelet and we have Nalan Taylor. And so we're going to bring them both on the screen and I am going to intro them for you. So uh, today, our guest of honor is Nalan Taylor who is a lover of languages, a classroom teacher in Louisiana. She teaches high school Spanish, multimedia, web design, and most recently has added the role of an English language coach who supports multilingual learners, their families, colleagues across the district. But you may not know this. I know this because I follow Nalan on Twitter, but she is... Um, into sketch noting. She has all kinds of creative outlets that she is into, including journals, doodling, bullet journals, and has most recently done some sketch noting. Uh, and she is inspired by the following people. Uh, Jen Giffen, Car uh, Carrie, how do you pronounce her last name, Nalan? I'm not sure. That's why I just say <laughs> Carrie B. <laughs> Yes, Manuel Herrera and uh, Nicole Carter. And she says that she's feeling her way through and want to, wanting to expose her students to learning any way possible. She's going to share her sketchnoting journey today, and we're going to hear more from her in just a minute. But now I'm going to introduce my co-host, Rick from Wakelet. So if you didn't know, this is Rick, and he, is, uh, he manages engineering and operations at Wakelet. And he's a founding member of Wakelet. A lot of people do not know that. And something else you may not know is that Rick studied aviation technology. He obtained his private pilot's license and he worked as an airport consultant before joining Wakelet. And he actually is also a sketch noter. Um, so I am uh, the the odd person out here because I'm not the drawer of this group. Um, but you both are going to teach us some things today. And we're all really excited about that. So again, um, if any of you, Rick or Nalan, if you see anybody in the chat that you want to shout out, like I see Stevie Frank, I'm so excited to see some of these people that I haven't seen on a webinar in so long. So kudos to both of you for bringing all the people together. Um, to give everybody an overview of our hour together, this is what it will include. We're going to talk about sketchnoting and what sketchnoting is. We're going to talk about how it might be helpful in the classroom. We're going to show you the draw feature. We're going to talk about why Wakelet has a draw feature, how it works, and then we're going to give you some examples. Um, and so hopefully my tech specialist in the background, uh, shout out to Elle, I'm hoping she can put the collaborative collection link in the chat. So I have put together a collaborative Wakelet collection because my ask of you today, all of you that are joining, uh, get out your pens, your pencils, your iOS devices, your Android devices, your Apple pens, whatever you're using. And we would love for you to sketch all of the different information that Rick and Nalan are going to share with you today. Maha, I'm not a drawer either. Um, I try, but I'm not good. So uh, let's see if we can get that collection in the chat. So just make sure you're looking for that and you can collaboratively add to that collection at the end of our session. But it is time now to turn it over to our guest of honor. Nalan, are you ready? I think so. <laughs> so excited. Okay, we're ready to hear from you. So we're gonna let you take the show away. Okay, all right. Well, hi everybody. As she already mentioned, I'm Nalan Taylor and in Louisiana and all of those things on that lovely bio were correct. 
Uh, this year, I am sort of out of the classroom in this new role as an English language coach and just getting to travel to different schools. Uh, but for a very long time, for the past 13 years or so, 14, I have been a high school Spanish teacher and it's been pretty exciting. Um, I love doodling. I've had a journal since I can remember. Uh, and more recently, I would say probably within the past three years, maybe four, I started uh, bullet journaling, which is basically a journal that has little dots. So some people also call it dot journaling. Um, but that helped me get into hand lettering a little bit and just kind of playing around with some things, just trying to pull out some more creative juices. Um, but the new thing about sketch noting came to be, and I was just like, that's a new term, but I think we all do that. I think in education, we kind of recycle and give things a different kind of name later on. And so I got into uh, sketch noting and was able to share just a few things. And so I want to go ahead and do that with you all today. And I hope that you get a chance to enjoy some of the stuff that we talk about. So uh, one of the things that I do want to share with you is the first screen. So this is obviously Wakelet. We all love Wakelet. I got a chance to be an ambassador a little, about a few months ago. And so within that, I created a collection or began creating a collection that was just for sketchnoting, which you all will have access to. So in here, I have a ton of things that I've taken from a journal um, perspective and just kind of taken my screenshots and added to them. And those are just kind of what I did personally with it all, because I have, like I said, I have tons and tons of journals. I'd love to keep them everywhere, but you can start with whatever you have, wherever you have. And it doesn't have to be the part that I really enjoyed the most about sketchnoting or about doodling is that you don't have to be this grandiose artist. It's not about that. It's about the ideas that you can bring forth. It's about what you received or what you retained from the lesson. And so basically, it's just another form of visual note taking. And so made a couple of notes already. Here's some other sketch notes that I'll put in there. I'll probably add on to those things that are on because I have a ton of things that I just am always drawing. So as soon as I finish doing something or, you know, attending some kind of event or webinar, I just kind of doodle out my notes and then add them to that collection that we have there. So uh, I wanted to share with you first off how I kind of use it in the classroom. And so you're looking at these things here. And of course, you already have access to this one, to this sketch notes here. But I'm going to go back and share with you how we started off in the classroom with that. And it wasn't even necessarily with the title of sketch notes. It was just me trying to kind of be vulnerable with my students and figure out, well, maybe I talked about this in another time before. If it's something that I'm passionate about, if it's something that sparks my interest and help me learn, then why not bring that into the classroom? And I know for so many years, a lot of us have taught the way that we were taught. You know, a lot of people did that with languages. And so because I'm a lover of languages, some people will say, oh, well, you know, we learned with vocabulary and grammar rules, but that necessarily isn't the best practices type way or what's reaching our students now. And so what I wanted to do or share with my students was bring with them a joy and a love for the things that I enjoyed. I liked journaling. So maybe they would too. I like drawing or doodling after things. I didn't always feel like writing stuff down. So maybe they would too. I like games. So I brought that into the classroom. I like for things to be creative and colorful. So maybe they would too. And so I'm going to share with you a couple of their collections after mine. And then all of the things that you have here, like I'll continue to add on to those as well. But I wanted you to see that you have a couple of startup things that are also in this collection. So in here, you have different um, ideas as far as what to draw, how to draw, different websites to be able to go to to use for them. You also have things that kind of got me started, right? Or even like my very first one, we were calling it sketchnoting. I'm going to share that one with you. And then I'm going to open up the, the collections that I did with, with students. So this one that you're looking at here was after, I can't remember if this was an Adobe Adobe Spark thing, or if it was a ditch that textbook. But see, it says session number three up top. And remember, I told you linking up with different people who are in that field. So I noticed Jen was in there. Her, her Twitter handle is virtual gift. And this was her session talking about those things. And so I just began to doodle away. I just started drawing. And um, these were just my takeaways on just, you know, the day one of trying to figure those things out and, and share that stuff together. So it's not about, it's not about the art. And I want to reiterate that it's not about 
that and this is the part right here in this little top right hand corner it's about the ideas all right even though i have a little light bulb <laughs> so it's about the ideas and not the art okay so just wanted to share that with you but like i said within the entire collection you have an opportunity to see items or things that you can use for yourself for your class for your students and uh, different documents different videos that i've curated and kept in here just for you right obviously for myself too because i like to go back and look at it when i have a chance to share that with students but so far it's 50 items in there and it's going to continue growing so let me share with you the classroom note okay so let me share with you the classroom and how we kind of got started with that one and sorry guys my stuff is in portuguese here so i'm trying to pick up my language skills so portuguese is next on the list but we had a classroom and this is these are my students last year and i'm only going to share a couple of them with you because i got another tab of flip grid open or flip so that you can see that but with the classroom it was so exciting because every thursday started off the school year like this and i just wanted to do something different i think i read somewhere on instagram it was like the older that you get the less you are, the less creative you are, or the less creative juices you have. You know what I mean? Like this teacher said she did some kind of activity where all the students drew, I think, 13 or 15 circles, right? And inside of every circle, they were supposed to talk a little bit about themselves or draw something that relates to whatever, whatever they like, school, family, whatever. They couldn't finish the drawings, at least the adults couldn't, or the high school students couldn't. But the elementary school students were rolling. I mean, they needed more circles to be able to draw. And so when I saw that, I felt that sometimes as an adult, those things are difficult. And I don't want to lose any creative juices. I want to give everything that I have and also allow my students to give everything that they have. And so, you know, this began. So we started doing something that was called Think Out the Box Thursday. And Think Out the Box Thursday, I saw her from one of my friends on Instagram. And she also has a TPT store, right? But you can support it or not. Everybody is like a taboo word. But um, it's there. And uh, it's called Celebrate You, right? And it's, it's actually S-E-L for Social Emotional Learning, Celebrate You. And inside of that store, um, she has this Think Out the Box Thursdays. Now, for anybody who may not have ever heard of that, it, it actually is a... A, um, how can I say that? It is an image that you get. In this first collection, you're not really going to notice that much, <laughs> but the students would get an image, okay? We had him collect his whole little thing at first. They would get an image, and then the objective was to complete the image, okay? So if I went in here, let me just click on this and see if I can make it a little bigger there. When I click on that image, you're going to be able to see what it came out. The objective is finish what it is that you saw, right? So I give students this image and it kind of looks like a cloud, but at the end of this paper, he kind of cut it off there and I'm gonna show you somebody else who has one. The image is complete this image and it says it's everything that it's not. So this is everything but a cloud. So with this particular student, you're only seeing the image that they got to finish to draw. And this is us just kind of starting off the school year, getting to roll with it, right? But later on down the line, when I started going to more students, I was thinking, well, maybe, of course, this is my world language class, my Spanish class. So I'm going to add in a few more things. I want them to do more than just that. OK, I want them to be able to complete the picture for me. I want them to be able to add in their ideas of what they have. So this next person started to get a little bit more fancy for me. Right. And uh, you'll see at the bottom, it says complete the picture. Right. Complete the image. It's not a bat. <laughs> so I would create this for them. I would give them the printout and you can kind of see the black line here. Right. This is kind of like the outline of what the bat is. OK, but again, it's their thinking outside of the box It's everything but a bat. So she goes on to write and she says it's a duck with a funny tail. All right. So mind you, this is high school. And I realized that some of these activities might seem elementary, but we needed to put something back into our overall quote unquote curriculum that was not just all you know, not necessarily not fun and games or not necessarily not rigor, but we needed to put something back there that was going to spark creativity and give them a desire of something else to look forward to. So each week, every Thursday, we made it consistent. And, um, you know, every time I would add on to it. So in the beginning, they just needed to draw, right? They just needed to put something in there. But in the end, you will go on to see, well, actually, let me go back to one more student over here. In the beginning, they just began drawing. OK, but in the end, I wanted to spice it up just a little bit more. And I asked for them to begin putting together their collections 
with words and phrases in Spanish that we can use. And they were simple sentences, but I would give them prompts as well. So amazing. So this one is everything, it's not an arrow. So complete the picture, it's not an arrow. And she said, it's a house, right? Es una casa. But then she went on to go ahead and design all the parts about the house. So this, of course, student was very different, very creative, but it just goes to show all the other opportunities that you know we all had to be able to give. And so you can see the sentences in Spanish down here. En el cielo hay dos nubes y un sol. So she started writing in, right? In the heavens or in the sky, there are two clouds and a sun. So I got them to begin describing their sentences for me in Spanish. And I would give them little starters. Yo dibujé, I drew. So she says, I drew a red house or a red and black house. And then she said, there are trees that are brown and, and green. It was just beautiful. But I, again, after I got a chance for them to see this little portion here, then I would move on to the next. So tons, tons of ideas. This one I think was the circle that couldn't have been a donut. I think one of them, it was a half of a donut, but she made it to a hat, right? With a person inside of the hat, just amazing. And a lot of my students were like that. So I took it over and this is what we do with the app smashing here. You know, we're doing something on paper. We get a chance for them to do that then. And then we move on and I created a group inside of Flip so that I could actually hear them. And you will see all of my little topics over here, right? So think of the box thirds and we made it all the way up until 13 toward the end of May. Okay, so not necessarily every week consistently, but that's pretty good to knock out 13 times. <laughs> so all I would do is um, start off with a topic. I would go ahead and put that same image that I had that was there, and then they would get a chance to share with me exactly what it was. I think I had 13. Let me go back to 13 so that you can see that. And of course, sometimes I would do it with them. Well, not sometimes. Most of the time I would. So you will see me lead by example with my students, too. And if it's something that I didn't understand, I would do the same thing just for them, you know? So I would give them the whole shebang here, right? So you don't have to hear me. <laughs> but that's one of the parts that we did after looking at one of our um, uh, class novels. We did a class novel together. But those would be ideas that would spark their learning, too, and spark their imagination. So I'm looking at my little notes here that I wanted to share with you. And when we're talking about the students, this is the part where I started. So start off maybe with a Think Out the Box Thursday. Start off with images already that they just have to complete. Then that way you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You already have a base or a little bit of a foundation. And then I started sharing. So share the collections, share your ideas with other people. They can be resources for teachers. There are lessons um, to begin with with students, tons of visual examples. And then there's also a link to another app that I found out on, I think it was at Ditch, Ditch Summit with J. Matt Miller. I think he talked about the app that is called, or not the app, but the web uh, site called The Noun Project. So if you're kind of like me sometimes and you're doodling or drawing the same things, you want something that is new. And so with The Noun Project, that website, they have icons. So you can type in whatever it is that you're looking for, like a book or a pencil or a ship or whatever it is that you're looking for, and then find out an easy way to be able to draw that and add that into your notes. Now, it kind of takes away from your own, you know, coming up with it yourself or a way to understand or remember an idea, but it's all the help. So all the resources that we can give is it. Uh, I also have something on there that I shared when I first did the, the original sketch note, and I had a chance to do a... Um, a podcast a couple of nights ago with uh, Microsoft Live stuff with uh, Robin and with Scott Bricker. And we'll get a chance to talk about that. But they asked me, what did I think about vulnerability? Because I'm not, I don't have to have all the answers. I don't have all the answers. I don't know. I just, I just jumped into this kind of like everybody else. And that's kind of just like my personality. I like jumping into things and trying it out for the first time. But I had a quote that I saw or heard when I was in one of those sketch note sessions. And that quote came from Brene Brown. And that quote talked about vulnerability. Because for me, I enjoy those kind of relationships with my students where we understand and we find out those things together. And this could be one of those tools that also helps you build community in your classroom or just, you know, with other people. And so that quote is here. All right. I'm going to zoom in and you might be able to find it on there. I would say, let me know when you see it. But remember, the key word is vulnerability. Okay. And so what we talked about there, if you can see it, it's right there in the middle. You might see where I put birthplace written down. You might see how I tried to even draw just that little emoji kind of. You see that where the letter O starts, okay? So the quote itself says, vulnerability is the birthplace of creativity. There's creativity down there 
and change. So how amazing is that, right? So thinking about things that we may not understand together or things that you may not have all the answers for, it's okay, we're not supposed to. And so with sketchnoting, this is another opportunity to build a community with your students. It's another opportunity to, to grow together. Um, so again, vulnerability right there in the middle is the birthplace of creativity and change. That's from Brene Brown. Um, just some of the things just to wrap that up are some practicing. So for me to practice or for me to introduce it to my students again, I did some live, uh, live chats. I followed along with Carrie, um, Carrie and Dr. Mandy on Doodle and Chat. They have something every Wednesday night. So that's a part to begin practicing. You can tune in there. There are guest speakers. And then while the guest speaker is on and just talking about everything in life or just, you know, we have tons of stories to be able to share as human beings. And so as they're talking, you're just doodling and on your paper and drawing on all of those things. So participate in some live chats. Um, I talked about the bullet journal already that I had. There's also a sketch note day, a national sketch note day every year. And so that was something different. Everybody takes their own sheet of paper. There's one, did it start off blank? I think it starts off blank, but everybody has, every team has like a color. So it's like team red, team green, team yellow. And this year I was on team red. First time I've ever done it. This one sheet of paper ended up being passed around the globe, okay, passed around the globe, and then everybody got a chance to add on to the sketch note. So you would take it, you would draw your portion, and then pass it on to the next person to see who had what. So that was pretty awesome. It was called sketch note day. So that's something that you can look at. Um, support friends. There's tons of literature. There's Sylvia Duckworth. I didn't mention her. She's a huge sketch noter who came out with a book, all of those things, tons of tips. Um, use guided notes sometimes. I, and I share that with students in the beginning because you know some people, everybody learns differently and we begin to find those things out when we offer more opportunity. But let's say for example, I had a different content area, like, you know, like social studies maybe or even English. Sometimes I could provide my students with a layout or with guided notes. And then that would be easier for them to go in and sketch note to say, okay, well, she's going to talk about three different topics today. And these are the ideas or the issues that go underneath that topic. So sometimes it's easier for your students to have an outline for them to kind of create and to have their ideas around. So that might be something that, you know, you would consider sharing out. Um, start with small confidence boosters, collaborative activities together and then providing those tangible and digital resources. So anchor charts, the websites, and just like I said with your own students, like I did with mine, do it together, right? Nothing wrong with that at all, do it together. So just wanted to share some of those things with you. I hope you got some good ideas and plenty to take away, um, but I'm open for questions, obviously, and uh, I can stop talking now. <laughs> Uh-oh, you're muted. <laughs> I'm so inspired by you, but my notes do not look half as good as your sketch notes, but I do want to show you that I was really trying here. Um, awesome. I saw some people say they weren't sketch noters. I want to ask you, um, can you tell us in three words what your sketch noting story was? Did you start off just, mm -hmm. is that part of your um, talent just to be able to draw the way that we saw you sharing some of mm -hmm. your sketches? Mm, no, not at all. I didn't start off like that at all. I just, I felt like I was always a writer though. Like I always journal stuff down. Like I said, cause I kept a journal for everything. And sometimes in my journals, I would have like these weird little characters, like a little, it looked like a little ladybug, but not. <laughs> so I would probably say my three word sketch. I should have thought about this. And let me just share with the one who did give this to me, but I did not. Okay. So a three word sketch note story for me. Um, draw whatever whenever Ooh, i like it <laughs> so anything well i want to say i was taking notes um i have one more question to ask you but some of the things that you said that really stood out to me um mm -hmm. were sketch noting using best practices um sharing what you love as an educator with mm -hmm. your students i think that right there mm -hmm. is the definition of vulnerability in the classroom you mentioned brene brown i'm a huge brene brown fan um mm -hmm. all of the things brene brown i think it 
it so inspiring that you've kind of led with her quote. You also said that sketch noting is about the ideas and not the art. And for me, that really hit home for me, maybe with even some of our viewers, because I feel exactly what you just said. You said mm. that high school students love these ideas and prompts that are more like elementary level. And one of the things that I found as a high school teacher is that my students, though they were 16, 17, and 18, they still inside were first graders. They mm -hmm. loved when I would let them be creative. And I think that's something that we all really need to learn. Mm -hmm. um, you also said, you talked about finish what you see and the chat was going crazy with the finish what you see activity where you are telling them what that picture is not. Mm -hmm. It's such a simple prompt for them. It is not this, mm -hmm. but something about that guides them to mm -hmm. critically think through it. And you've given them such a bullseye. I, I, that is it my does. favorite. And it is really challenging. It's very challenging to think about, you know, and I wanted to just jump in real quick. I saw Omar Lopez's name mm -hmm. in the chat, Feli's husband. OMG, I follow him as well. And he is an amazing sketch amazing. So I have that, like I have some of his things saved in there because they're just awesome. So I saw his post or his comment come across the string earlier saying that he was an English language learner in the beginning and then sketch noting helped. That is a new role that I'm rolling into this year. And I would love to share those kinds of testimonies and things, uh, opportunities with our students now. You don't have to have all of the words all the time. It's okay. But an image says a thousand words. We know that already. And then look at how much I can go back and look at a picture. I can go back and see all the things that I drew and then put my words to it when I become a little bit more proficient and confident in that language learning. So I just, I feel like sketch noting tissue opens up the doors for everything. You know, it, 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 uh, you've already answered the question I had for you. One yeah. of the questions I had was, um, you know, what are some myths about sketch noting? But you've kind of already told us mm -hmm. some of those myths. I think you've hit on something along with Omar. He is an incredible artist, by the way, yes. um, really inspired by him. But I think you hit the nail on the head. I always say there is a way, not the way. And sometimes right. when I was in school and even as early as a couple of years, as recently as a couple of years ago, I heard some teachers discourage some students in class mm -hmm. to not draw on their notes. And I thought we have to remember that mm -hmm. um, not everybody is like us. Right. And so right. drawing comes easy to you. But if you were to assume in your classroom that it comes easy to everybody, that right. would really not create that classroom of trust that you right. were talking about where you're learning yeah. with your students. I just think it's so powerful. Um, everybody's asking for Omar's Twitter handle. I also shared Jen Giffen's Twitter handle awesome. and I was going to shout out Jen because yeah. in 2017, I saw Jen Giffen present on sketch noting and awesome. I will tweet out um, one of the tips that she gave as far yeah. as how to start sketching. Mm -hmm. Because for me, you see my notes are still all words. Yeah. Um, because I'm a writer mm -hmm. and so it takes a little bit more work for me yeah. to think of drawing. Yeah. So I'll, I'll tweet that out. Do you have any advice, um, mm -hmm. for those in the chat? Because I've seen it, a couple of them are still hesitant about drawing. What is mm -hmm. one piece of advice you have for those educators? I feel like I was that way as well. A little hesitant because I'm just like, I doodle a lot, kind of, you know, like I have like these weird looking stick figures and I'm just not, I'm not that artist. Like I'm not that person, but start with containers maybe and containers are anything where you can put all of your words like let's for, say for example with your notes that you have there you have words that might be down on the list put a box around it put some little put like the little squiggly circle things around it you know and then just add like a pop of color start with what you have and then use that other website use that website the noun project and just type in a word find an icon Find how would I draw a house or how do I draw a book and, and put the simplest thing in airplane and just kind of add pieces here and there that go along with it. And then later on, other things will be able to pop. Other things will be able to come like you don't have to draw. I don't have to have the whole face of a person because at first I used to think about that like, Man, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have a face. I don't have what is this stick figure, you know, but it's the idea. And that's the part to get back to. It's the idea of what it is that you have. What image comes to mind when you think about a particular word? And sometimes it, it takes a little while to spark our own creativity. Add some color at first. Use the website. Put a container around it. Those are, you know, those are usually your go-tos in the beginning. 
Yeah, Chris is saying practice leads to new skills. And I think it's like anything else that we're doing. We did have a question from Christine Moore that I thought was really, really good. She says, how do you teach them to not get so caught up in their sketching that they don't get the notes? So how do you refocus your students when you're allowing them to sketch notes Mm -hmm. so that they're still taking in that information? Yeah, I think sometimes it's really hard to do because it's hard for me to do as an adult to not get caught up on the aesthetics, you know, what I want it to look like instead of what it is that I'm taking in. So I would suggest an allotted amount of time for each right now. And sometimes as teachers, we have a hard time pulling back and not talking anymore. But sometimes our students need process time. They need think time. And so I would suggest, which I have to, I have to control myself sometimes. It's just like, Miss Taylor, slow down a little bit. Okay, we got it. Like you just gave us this thing, you introduced this next thing. We need time to go ahead and think it out. So as soon as you introduce your topic or your content and you've done that for like five, 10 minutes or even 15, you know, don't go past that because they're not going to the attention span is not there, y'all. Okay, <laughs> so give them that little chunk, put the timer on for like 15 and then put your timer on for a good 10 minutes of just, some music, some draw time, and let them process what it is that they have. And you don't have to worry about saying a thing. Don't go back and repeat anything if they want to go look at a note, if they want to go back and look at, you know, something from the book or, you know, whatever other kind of resource, that's fine. Or if you have an anchor chart around, but let it just be quiet. Let it, let that process time with music or whatever just shine through. Yeah. I love that. (laughs) Great advice. Great advice. So uh, we're going to, I'm going to take, we're going to, you're going to go backstage, but remember you're coming back to join Rick and I at the end because we want to have a discussion around some other things before our hour is over. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay. (laughs) So uh, next we're going to have Rick come in and we're going to talk about the Wakelet draw feature. Um, I have some questions for him. He's going to do a live demo. Welcome Rick to the sketch note webinar. (laughs) Hello. Welcome. Hi everybody. So I have a question for you. Uh, My first question is why did you and the Wakelet team think that it was a great idea to add this Wakelet draw feature to the Wakelet app? So the biggest reason, and uh, Nalan said it multiple times, creativity. Bring the creative side for students so it's not just focused around content on the, on the web, videos, that kind of thing. Actually bring that creativity, that sketching into the actual collections themselves and allow students to organize what they draw. That was the biggest inspiration to bring that feature in. Awesome. So what devices is the draw feature currently available on? So it's available on iOS and Android. So iPhones, iPads, um, and any Android mobile and tablet devices. So we tried to really open it up for everyone. Okay, but somebody's going to ask this question. You know what's going to happen. It's usually going to be Tisha Poncio. But what about (laughs) on my Chromebook, Rick? I really, I have a Chromebook and I really, really want to do drawing on my Chromebook because I'm that talented that I can do it on the little mouse pad. (laughs) Yeah, well, uh, we see the importance of this feature across all devices and it is in the roadmap for the future to introduce it onto the web. So, uh, Fingers crossed very soon we'll have that on Chromebooks, on Windows, on Macs, everything. Okay, awesome. So we want to know how it works. So do you think that you could do a demo and show us the Wakelet draw feature? Absolutely, yeah. I'll, uh, I'd like to share my screen. Uh, so I've got my iPad here at the moment. So uh, I'm just going to open up the sketch noting in the classroom collection that I've got and I'm going to tap on the blue plus at the bottom. And you'll see just in the bottom left-hand corner, uh, we have the draw feature, which I'm just going to tap on. And this basically opens up a nice blank canvas for us. And at the bottom, we've got all the different tools that you can uh, use. And in the top right-hand corner, you'll see a back and forward arrows. They're the undo and redo buttons. So uh, what you see here on iOS, is a bit different to Android, and I will explain the differences between them. One thing I will do for now is I'm just gonna move the panel over to the right, so just in case anybody's not seeing the panel and what I'm looking at. So I'm gonna start from top down, and we've got three drawing tools here. So this is the, starting from the top is the pen, we've got the highlighter, and then we've got the pencil. So if I tap on the pen, 
now, you can see it will shift out and then I can just start drawing on the screen however I want. So my lovely sketching right there. So we're not all uh, amazing drawers, so it's always better to start with what you know. Stickman is what I started with and I just built from there. But there are incredible uh, artists out there, sketch noters. And one thing I do want to say, Nalan's handwriting is gorgeous. I'm very, very jealous about that. Very jealous. So one thing with the uh, pen tool, you can see that I've got it already highlighted. I'm going to tap on it again. And you now see I get options for the thickness of the pen and also the actual opacity, which is this little slider here. So if I would reduce the thickness size, you'll see now that it's different thicknesses available to me. So you've got that flexibility there. And just so everyone knows, on Android, uh, we only have the pen tool, but you still do have the opacity and size of the actual pen itself. So let me just give you some references for the different ones on iOS. So we've got the pen there. I'm going to select the highlighter and then the pencil. And you can see on each three different ones, you've got really different nice textures. So it allows you to really bring some creativity with the different drawing utensils. Uh, and that's what we really want to do is, is open it up to as many different possibilities for, for students to really get uh, some creative ideas flowing. And just underneath that, we've got the rubber or razor. Um, obviously, it's uh, everyone knows what those do. But one thing I just want to show very, very quickly is you'll see at the moment it's got like a little X just under the rubber, that basically means that if I draw over this pencil, this red line, the whole thing disappears. Now, if I just undo, I'm going to tap on the rubber again. I've now got pixel eraser and object eraser. So if I select pixel eraser, what this does is wherever I'm drawing, it starts to just draw out on those little bits. So you've got that flexibility there. If you want to just do a little bit of fine tuning, maybe, uh, you can do, or if you want to just get rid of absolutely everything, you can. It's that simple. And then after that, just below, we'll quickly go into, we've got this little weird pen, pencil or with little lines. Basically what this does, if I select it, I can draw around an object and then just start moving it around. So you're not locked in with whatever you've drawn. You can then decide, oh, you know what? I want that going over there because I want to start drawing in this region. And I'll just draw my little stick figure again. So you've got that flexibility there, which is great. And then just underneath that, you have your ruler, which is obviously just makes it so much simpler just to quickly draw some nice lines underneath. If I just do a pen, I can do a quick box if I wanted to. Whoops, that's my, not actually allowing me on that one. There we go. So yeah, so you've got that available. And this is something else that's not available on Android is the ruler, but you do have the ability to draw straight lines. So anything that we've got on Android, on iOS, we try to accommodate on Android where we can. And then lastly, we've just got the colors down at the bottom. You'll see a little rainbow circle just in the bottom right hand corner. If I tap on that, I get all my different options of selecting colors. So I've got a grid structure, spectrum and also sliders so if i have like a hex code or something i can just enter that in and um, use any color that i want for my drawings so yeah that is the draw feature basically in a nutshell so i have a request rick um could cool. you actually show us one more time how you went into a collection and you got to the draw feature. Um, and also just to confirm, this is only for iOS and Android at the moment. Is that right? That is correct. Yes. So okay. to get into a collection, so this is just something that we've also put in so everyone's aware. If you accidentally press the close button without pressing save, we will ask you if you, if you actually do want to leave. So there's no worry of accidentally losing what you've done. Um, but yeah, all I did was we've got, I'm inside a collection right now. I've got the blue plus in the bottom of the screen. I'm just going to tap on that. And you'll see in the bottom left of the list is draw. 
that's the actual draw feature. So just under the camera, and then it brings up my canvas for me. Awesome. Thank you so much. So uh, Rick and I actually want to show you something that we were working on because you saw in Nalan's share, she was sharing uh, the classrooms portion of Wakelet. And so I wanted to show you what this might look like in the classroom if you have devices and when you are able to use this with your students on um, a desktop device. <laughs> So we're going to share my screen now, I believe. Um, so we're going to switch out and I'm going to show you what I did. So I am just going to set this up. I created a classroom in Google and I then went into Wakelet and went to the classrooms portion of Wakelet. So let me show that. We're going to share my screen. Let me make sure I'm showing you the correct thing here. Okay, so I'm in my home area and I have, a, hold on, Kira has an, a, a question, Rick, and we're going to answer that because she asked what I asked you earlier, which is, could you be able to draw on top of a picture or a PDF that's already in a collection? <laughs> Can you answer that? Oh, um, <laughs> it is something we're looking at at the moment. That's as much as I can <laughs> say. I can't say, yes, we can do it, but we're looking into the possibility. I, I really hope we can. Um, but yeah, we're, we're seeing what we can do. Because I keep asking for it also. Um, yeah, Tish okay. is asking me every single day for that feature. So. <laughs> okay, so I'm in classrooms. And just like you saw with Nalan's chair, she had a classroom. So I actually have a Poncio practice classroom here. And you can see that I have one student in my classroom. And so when I click on my student, now I can see his collections. And I actually created this science learning notebook for unit three for grade three. We just made this up, um, but I wanted you to see what this might look like. Of course, I did use the Canva integration to create the header here. And then um, Rick took it as a student um, and you can see it's in my classroom, but it is Rick's collection. And I asked him as an essential driving quest question, show the order of the planets in the solar system from the sun. So I gave this to him. I gave him this assignment earlier this week and said, this is what I want you to do. And so he has gone in and actually sketched all of these extra things here. And I think Nalan is right when, when she says that when you give your students the space to be creative, they just will. Um, the essential question was just for him to show me this right here. But as you can see, he kept going <laughs> because he likes drawing. So you can use this idea in your classroom and draw whatever you want. You can give your students prompts like Nalan did. Um, so we just wanted you to see that portion. I'm going to come back to you and we can stop sharing my screen now, L. Um, so, and we want to bring Nalan back on. Um, so I have some questions for Rick and then we're going to have Nalan weigh in on those because we want to talk about sketch noting with different learners. And so um, what you may not know is that Rick is dyslexic. And so he has willingly answered some questions for me. We've gone over them previously, but we want to share this with you because I want you to remember there is a way, not the way. And so sometimes as teachers, like Nalan said, we, without meaning to kind of force our way and we forget to give students processing time, we forget to back up and give them room and space. So Rick, my question, my first question for you is as an adult with dyslexia, what strategies help you when you're learning or working? Yeah, the main strategy that I work on is listen first and use that extra time to process the information that's being provided to me because I really do find that I might be asked something and it kind of takes me a little bit longer to really understand what they're trying to explain to me. And what I may also do as well, like most people, is I'll take a lot of notes, whether that's on my iPad or on a notepad, and later on, I'll then look at my notes and organize and sketch them out to however I feel is easiest for me and also allow that information to stick as well. 
we're going to come back to all of that. So be ready. <laughs> <laughs> so um, my next question is, how does drawing help you in your day-to-day -day work environment? So how do you see drawing benefit you on a daily basis? Yeah, I'd, I'd probably say the biggest one is when I'm presented with a problem, uh, I see it differently. As I mentioned before, that I might process the information differently to others. And I find that drawing something out, so if I'm presented with a problem, I want to see where all the moving parts are, where it all interconnects. So maybe even just drawing a flow chart or just a graph or anything that feels more visual helps me to find out what the solution is to that problem. Or maybe there might be multiple solutions for it. I don't know. But seeing it as a bigger picture is much better because I always find that being dyslexic, when someone hands me a large document with loads of text in, it's very overwhelming for me. And because I'm slow at reading, it means then that I'm just going to take a lot longer to understand what the problem is and what they're trying to solve. So definitely having someone talk and sketching something out is much quicker for me to, to get the solution. Absolutely. So what do you wish your teachers had asked you or allowed you to do as a young learner in school? Um, well, for starters, I wish um, Nalan was actually my teacher, to be honest. <laughs> um, everything that she's said is spot on to what I wish I could have, because the biggest problems that I had when I was in school, when I was asked a question, it was always on the spot in front of everyone and the teacher's expecting one answer. Now, again, going back to the whole thing of processing things differently, taking information different to what the teacher's expecting, I might get it wrong. And that made me feel like I don't want to participate. I'm not interested. And because of that, teachers were thinking that I wasn't engaged in class. I'm not interested. A lot of the times they thought I was daydreaming and um, I just didn't know the answers when really all it was was I just wanted more time. I just wanted to understand what I'm learning and then I can come forward with uh, to actually participate. And the thing is, I only passed it. Ah, can't speak properly. I only part took part in uh, classes when I felt very confident on what I was talking about. Uh, so when I've actually taken that time to learn. So I would definitely say the biggest thing for me in class was uh, I would have loved more visual uh, references uh, because a lot of the times it was read from the textbook, take notes from the textbook, which is full of information as well as loads of images that are heavily annotated or even a projector. So not PowerPoint presentation, your little uh, clear plastic sheets that they've written on and stuff. And a lot of the times it was, it was just pure text. And because a lot of teachers didn't really sketch unless they were uh, art, art teachers or design tech teachers, they just wrote things out, which for me was just, it was difficult. So definitely the visual side of things would have been a huge help. Sure. So Nalan, uh, after hearing Rick share his story and also working with mm -hmm. students for as many years as you have, um, what can you speak to about maybe accommodating for students that are in class? Um, because we, you know, as educators, we are trying to accommodate for all of the learners. I don't have dyslexia, but I can tell you that I need as much processing time as maybe Rick does because I was the student sitting in the class who was at the very back of the room, not answering questions, even though I knew them because I didn't want to be called out in front of everyone or because I just need extra time to process maybe what the answer was so I would be confident about it. What advice do you have for all of those teachers watching, whether they are new teachers, veteran teachers, what do you want to remind them about um, those learners in your classroom and how sketchnoting could help that? Can you share some of your expertise with that? Uh, I think I would always say you don't have to have all the answers, but to ask them, and sometimes that's hard for students to process too, but 
especially because I have more experience with high school students and not the littles. Now I'm starting to work a lot with the littles and sometimes they may not be able to communicate all those things as, as accurately as they want to. And sometimes for our older students too, they can't, but I'm just like, just ask them. So a lot of times we'll have, I'll give them, and I know we don't like the word survey, but I, I'm always asking for their feedback because how do I know? How do I know if you really enjoyed the lesson? How do I really know if you really understood the material? Unless you tell me. I mean, I can see it on, on quote unquote data on what you, you know, turn in. But a lot of times I'm just like, hey, did you like this activity? Is there something that we could have done differently today? Did this work out for you? What can you tell me about what you got back? What, what kind of lessons did you get? And so that's step one. I, I like to get their input and before just trying new things. And sometimes it's a little it's a little iffy with teenagers too, because you know, they teenagers say, Well, I want to do what I want to do. And sometimes you think you got a good idea and you're all passionate about it. It's just like nobody doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just like, you're in class with me today, so this is what we're gonna do. You know, but yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, so you have your nails have a shout out, Nalan. Yeah. I just want you to know yeah. that they love your yellow nails. <laughs> uh, we also, Chris yeah. is saying UDL. Um, if you don't know about That's UDL, right. go research that now, write it down, sketch yeah. it. You want to know about that. It takes all students into account. And I love that we have p experts out there really studying UDL. So look at that. Um, and then I was looking for any other questions. I just want to reiterate because there were tons of questions around the Wakelet draw feature right now. Currently, this is only available on iOS and Android devices. And as Rick stated earlier, yes, this is on the roadmap for future. And even the request of annotating on a PDF or an image, they are listening to you. They are hearing you. And I know, Rick, you'll take this back to the team as well. Correct. 100%. Every bit of feedback will be taken back to the team. And I believe we have shared some resources in the chat as well. So make sure you scroll up. Maybe our fancy tech, L can share that link of resources one more time. See, she's already on top of it. Thank you so much. Um, Kira has a question, Rick, uh, for you. Can you edit a drawing after you've added it to a collection? I'm, I'm loving these questions because, uh, again, we are looking at it. Um, maybe not as advanced as any drawing, but certainly when you've started a drawing and want to come back to it uh, is the first thing that we are looking at. So fingers crossed. I know our uh, trusted iOS developer, Paul, is working hard on it and we'll be able to see maybe next week what he's been able to put together. So again, I can't guarantee that it will be there, but fingers crossed. And Rick has put his Twitter account right there. So if you want to follow him and follow up, you can. <laughs> <laughs> um, any, I'm looking for any other questions, but I know the certificate is in the chat. Um, any last thoughts that you, oh, Omar says, Rick, you've got to make it happen, please. He even added a okay. please to his request. So um, any last questions that you have, pop those in the chat and I'm going to see um, Rick, do you have any last uh, parting words for our viewers today? Uh, I think everything that Nalan has said is so powerful. Every student's different. Every student learns in a different way. And it can be difficult to accommodate for every single one. But I think definitely hearing them out and seeing where the, the differences may be. Uh, is definitely something that will help everybody to uh, to understand what you're trying to, to teach them. It's definitely something I wish I had rather than just high volumes of text and reading. Um, but I also loved art and design tech. It was my, if that were, that was where my passion was and I excelled and I kept that going. So, but if you want them to exceed in everything, Nalan, you to me, you're truly are an inspiration of what you're doing, honestly. Thank you so much. Love that. Thank you. I appreciate and that. Nalan, what parting words do you have for all of your fans out there? Yay! We're better together, guys. We can continue to learn so much from each other. And uh, you know, sometimes sometimes people put that that 
mantle on you that you're, you know, that you're an expert or sometimes you would use the titles, you know, and we like titles. I like titles and things like that too. But sometimes it's, it's hard to take away just to say, we're, how can I say this together? We're not necessarily experts together, but we are all learners together, you know? So we're all, we're all figuring out the same thing. There's no, and I like teaching that to what you always say all the time. You always say there's no one way, but there is a way. And sketchnoting might not be the thing for you. And that's okay. It's just another way to be able to share what it is that you want to communicate to your students. And all of them don't have to do it. So, you know, just because you share sketchnoting for one lesson or, you know, a couple of weeks, like, oh, we're going to jump into this real quick. It's okay if a couple of them chime in. It's also okay if they're really not feeling it. It doesn't mean that you suck as a teacher because, you know, we're very personal. <laughs> I'm just like, it didn't work. And I just want to, you know, it, why isn't it working? It's okay. There's something else that's going to speak to them. And if this is not it, we'll find something else or they'll be able to speak to it later on. So, you know, thank you guys. Thank you for this opportunity and just for, you know, for everybody being able to share together. I love sharing and growing and learning. And that sketch note collection that I, that I put out there, that link is going to be available and I'll continue to add some more things in there so you can pop in and share some things too. <laughs> Absolutely. And make sure you're sharing your drawings. Omar, I hope to see something in that co collaborative collection that I've shared out. Get started with sketch noting. Um, we would love to see what you're going to add, but he's correct. As teachers, we never stop being students. And the minute we stop being students, we have to remember that we have to pick that up again. We cannot stop. It is a journey. It is not a destination. And you're right. There is a way, not the way. Every student doesn't have to do sketch noting, but at least offer them that opportunity if it helps them. And I think that's the real takeaway here. Um, thank you both for joining me and sharing and being vulnerable about sharing. Um, I know everybody's really excited and inspired by both of you, as am I. Make sure all of you watching that you go follow Nalan. She has her Twitter handle, handle there as well. Follow Rick. And make sure that you follow Wakelet on all the social media channels, um, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok. And if you or your friends haven't watched all of this recording live, you can always go back to the YouTube channel and watch any of those videos, including this one, um, if you miss something. So thank you all for joining, and we will see you again soon.